humanoid robots are failing spectacularly and dangerously. From violent malfunctions to cyber attacks, unexpected edge cases, and operator mistakes, these incidents prove even cutting-edge humanoids can go rogue. Today, we're counting down the top six shocking humanoid robot incidents that spiraled out of control, shredding any illusion that these machines are utterly safe. Welcome back, everyone. Alfie here with a serious update from the world of advanced robotics. As humanoid robots continue evolving at lightning speed, so do the concerns. We've recently witnessed several alarming incidents, robots acting unpredictably, even aggressively, without any warning. This isn't just about glitches anymore. It's a wake-up call. You're watching the AI Nexus, where we track every breakthrough, every red flag, and everything shaping our future. Let's get into it. A humanoid robot just went berserk, live on stage during what was supposed to be a routine demonstration. One moment it was calmly suspended, the next it was flailing like it was possessed, smashing into nearby equipment, forcing engineers to back away in panic. And here's the crazy part. This isn't some science fiction scenario or a viral prank. This happened in real life. It's just one of several terrifying humanoid robot failures that are unfolding more often than you'd think. And today, we're diving into the most shocking real-world cases where humanoid robots malfunctioned, misbehaved, or flat-out went rogue without warning. The scene I just described? That was the Unitree H1 robot in China. It was hanging from a metal crane rig during testing, seemingly to demonstrate balance capabilities. Everything looked fine. Until it didn't. The robot suddenly jerked violently, spinning and swinging with so much force that it yanked the entire crane and nearly pulled it down. One engineer bolted away just in time as the robot's arm came inches from hitting him in the head. And no, this wasn't some Hollywood animatronic or an AI experiment gone wrong. The company later explained that the failure came from a miscalculation in its balance algorithm. Specifically, the software didn't account for the head tether holding it in place. So every time the robot tried to correct its balance, it couldn't move properly. That created a loop of overcorrections, leading to total chaos. But that's just the beginning. Now this next one takes the term robot tantrum to a whole new level. In San Francisco, a humanoid robot called Derek, created by REK Entertainment using a Unitree G1 platform, was being shown off to an invited audience at a robotics demo event. The robot, like the others, was suspended, probably as a precaution during programming. But during a software test, Derek began to shake and twist wildly. Its arms flung outward, and then the entire crane supporting it began to tip over. What's even more disturbing is that the robot didn't stop when the emergency kill command was sent. It took several seconds, long enough to snap a steel fixture, before it finally powered down. The company later admitted the robot was executing an ungrounded motion command, while its online connectivity lagged behind, delaying the shutdown. The only thing that stopped it completely was someone yanking the internet cable right out of the back. By now, you're probably wondering, how are these machines being allowed near people at all? Great question. There's another scene that's been going viral, a robot performance on a public stage at a cultural festival in Tianjin, China. The humanoid robot, designed for crowd interaction, was part of an entertainment act. But right in the middle of the routine, it unexpectedly stumbled forward toward the audience. Spectators screamed and security rushed in. Now some attendees claimed the robot intentionally lurched at the crowd. Others said it just lost balance and tripped. Either way, the footage caused serious alarm. A machine that powerful, falling or walking in the wrong direction, could injure someone, or worse. Event organizers quickly apologized, saying all safety protocols had been followed. But one thing was clear. The public was not ready for robots that act unpredictably in the middle of a packed audience. Then we have the robotic half-marathon in Beijing. 21 humanoid robots were entered into the world's first-ever half-marathon event to see how far these machines could go. And let me tell you, it wasn't pretty. Out of the 21 entries, only a handful made it to the finish line. Several fell within the first 100 meters. Others overheated and had to be carried off. Some required duct tape, zip ties, and on-the-spot battery swaps just to stay operational. One robot had its head fall off entirely during the run, 
and the engineers had to tape it back on like a low-budget sci-fi fix. While this wasn't an aggressive attack like the others, it still showed just how unreliable and fragile many of these systems still are when pushed into uncontrolled real-world environments. And speaking of injuries, this next case is even more serious. In yet another Chinese testing lab, a humanoid robot allegedly struck a worker during a live trial. The robot's arm, designed for dexterous manipulation, swung out of control and hit the technician in the chest or shoulder. He was rushed to the hospital and is reportedly recovering, but the incident has sparked enormous backlash about humanoid safety procedures in industrial environments. Footage from the scene shows the robot suddenly powering up and moving without a clear trigger. Whether this was due to a glitch, power surge, or a miscommunication between human and machine remains under investigation. Now here's a little known case that didn't happen recently, but it's important to mention. Back in 1981, in Japan, a factory worker named Kenji Urata became the first known human to be killed by a robot. He had jumped over a safety barrier to perform maintenance on a robot arm. What he didn't realize was that the machine was still active. The robot turned back on and pinned him against a machine, crushing him before anyone could intervene. This happened over 40 years ago, before we even had humanoids walking around. But it illustrates something crucial. Humans have always underestimated the dangers of giving machines physical agency. Whether it's a robotic arm or a full humanoid figure, the risk is real. Let's talk about what's going on here. Because none of this is happening by accident. First, these robots are incredibly complex systems, made up of advanced mechanical components, high-torque motors, vision systems, AI decision layers, cloud-based control, and more. When even one of those systems behaves unexpectedly, the robot can behave in ways that are totally unpredictable. And when the robot's body is as powerful as a human or more, it becomes dangerous instantly. Second, there's the software. Many of these malfunctions stem not from evil AI, but from flawed assumptions. A robot might assume it's grounded when it isn't. It might interpret a simple movement command as an emergency response. Or it might not recognize physical tethers or stage limitations, leading to escalating corrections that spiral into chaos. These aren't just bugs. They're signals that even the smartest developers can't foresee every edge case. Third is the human factor. Some of these disasters happened because of rushed code. Others because someone wasn't trained well enough or because a company skipped critical safety checks. These aren't just robot problems. They're problems of responsibility, testing, and risk management. And fourth, security. In at least one of these cases, engineers had to physically unplug the robot to get it to stop. That tells you a lot about current fail-safe design. It's not just about good software. It's about how fast you can shut down a machine if something starts to go wrong. In real life, every second counts. And sometimes, the only emergency stop that works is pulling the plug yourself. So here's the big question. Are humanoid robots ready for public deployment? Are they safe enough to be on stage, in factories, at festivals, or in your office? Based on what we've seen, the answer is not yet. They're amazing machines, no doubt. They can walk, balance, grasp objects, even mimic emotion. But until their systems are bulletproof, and until human operators are trained to handle failures immediately, we're going to keep seeing situations where robots go out of control. And if we're not careful, the consequences could be deadly. It's easy to laugh at these videos. A robot flails, falls, or crashes into a table. It looks like a blooper reel. But the truth is, every one of these moments could have ended much worse. Just think about it. What if that unitary robot's arm had hit someone in the head? What if the festival robot had trampled a child? What if Derek's delayed emergency stop had caused electrical damage, or worse, a fire? These aren't just hypotheticals. They're real risks. And we haven't even gotten to the ethical side of things. What happens when these robots get smarter? What happens when they start making decisions on their own? If they can already misbehave due to software bugs, what happens when we give them more autonomy? More freedom to move, adapt, or interact? There's no simple answer, but one thing is clear. We need better safeguards, more transparency, and stricter standards. Because right now, 
The only thing stopping some of these robots from causing serious harm is luck and duct tape. But just when the world starts questioning whether humanoid robots are even safe enough to be around people, boom! Unitree flips the script entirely. Instead of another safety failure, they've dropped a $5,900 humanoid robot that might just change the entire game. That's right. While some robots are flailing and crashing on stage, Unitree's latest creation is pulling off cartwheels, shadowboxing, and running AI routines like a pro, and at a price that no one saw coming. So what exactly is the Unitree R1? In simple terms, it's a lightweight, research-focused humanoid robot released by Unitree Robotics in July 2025. But in reality, it's much more than that. Because while most humanoids on the market right now cost tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars, the R1 enters the game with a price tag starting at just $5,900. Now we've seen budget robots before, but not like this. The R1 has 26 degrees of freedom. That's 26 joints, arms, legs, torso, neck, giving it an impressively fluid and human-like motion. Most research-level robots with that kind of mobility cost at least triple the price. And even among high-end competitors, this level of balance, coordination, and control, especially in a sub-30 Kigi robot, is rare. But Unitree didn't just build a cheap robot that can wave and wobble. No, they built one that can cartwheel. Yes, it actually does cartwheels. They also showed off a clip of it shadowboxing. That's right, throwing jabs and ducking like a little humanoid boxer. And even though it's clearly not ready to step into the ring with Mike Tyson anytime soon, the fact that a sub-6K robot can move like that is impressive. But let's break this down a bit more. What exactly makes the R1 so different? First, its weight. The R1 is just 25 kithi, uh, which is significantly lighter than Unitree's earlier humanoids like the G1 and H1. That makes it not only more portable, but also safer and more agile. You don't need a team of engineers to move it around, and you're not going to lose a toe if it accidentally tips over. Second, its AI system is fully multimodal. That means it's designed to process both voice and image inputs. So theoretically, you could walk up to it, give it a verbal command, and it'll not only recognize your words, but also visually analyze the environment to act accordingly. We're talking object recognition, face tracking, gesture detection, all the bells and whistles you'd expect in much more expensive systems. And then there's the battery system. The R1 runs for about an hour on a single charge, and the battery is swappable. Not hot swappable, mind you, but easy to replace between sessions. That's a huge win for researchers and developers who need extended testing time without long wait periods. So, who exactly is the R1 for? Unitree is being pretty clear about this. It's aimed at researchers, developers, and enthusiasts. This isn't meant to be your home assistant or warehouse laborer, at least not yet. It's a development platform, a test bed for robotic motion, AI interaction, and bipedal control. Think of it as a canvas, and Unitree's giving it to you at a ridiculously low price. Because here's the real play. Unitree is lowering the barrier to entry into the humanoid robot space. Until now, only well-funded labs and corporations could afford bipedal AI platforms. But at under 6K, a small university team, or even a serious hobbyist, can now get hands-on with real, embodied AI. That's why the R1 is such a big deal. It's not just what it does today, it's about who gets access. And when more people get access to something as powerful as humanoid robotics, the pace of innovation accelerates. Fast. Now let's be real. The R1 isn't perfect. It's not built for carrying loads. It's not waterproof. It doesn't have advanced hand dexterity, and you're not going to see it doing backflips or folding laundry anytime soon. But it's not supposed to do that. That's what Unitree's more expensive models like the H1 are for. The R1 is about learning, experimenting, testing, and iterating. It's a physical research tool that moves like a human and understands its surroundings. And now, for the first time, it's within reach of people who aren't backed by Fortune 500 budgets. And here's where it gets really interesting. Because while Unitree is making humanoids cheaper and more agile, other companies are starting to put humanoids into public service. Over in Shanghai, something pretty wild just happened. And yes, it was caught on camera. 
A video went viral this week showing what looks like a humanoid robot traffic cop directing traffic on the streets of Shanghai. Not on a test track, not inside a lab, but in real city traffic. And no, it wasn't someone in a suit. This was a fully mechanical humanoid, stationed right in the middle of the street, waving arms to control traffic flow with mechanical precision. Now, details are still a bit sparse. The clip, posted on X by at X RoboHub, has been reshared thousands of times already. In the footage, you can clearly see the robot standing on a platform, arms outstretched, moving in coordinated gestures to guide vehicles and pedestrians. It's not a stunt. It's not a marketing prop. Local authorities actually appear to be testing out robotic assistance for real-world urban infrastructure. And while we're not saying humanoids are about to replace every traffic officer in Shanghai, it's definitely a sign of how fast these machines are being integrated into human environments. Think about it. Less than a decade ago, humanoid robots were clumsy lab experiments. Today, they're managing live intersections in the heart of a major global city. And here's where things start to connect. Because while the robot traffic cop is likely a proprietary or custom-built system, it shows the direction we're heading. Humanoids functioning in everyday public life. And Unitree? With the R1, they've now opened the door for anyone to start building humanoids that could one day be doing that same job. What starts as a research demo could evolve into a real-world application. Today, it's cartwheels and voice commands. Tomorrow, it's logistics, elder care, teaching, or yes, even directing traffic during rush hour. So let's zoom out for a second. What does all of this actually mean? The R1 is significant not just because it's cheap or lightweight. It's significant because it's a signal that the humanoid revolution isn't just for the mega-rich tech giants anymore. If Unitree can offer a bipedal robot with real AI for $5,900 today, what happens in five years? What happens when it drops below 3,000 C? When it fits in a carry-on case? When your kid gets one for school? And remember, Unitree's been pushing hard this past year. The H1 model already made headlines for running faster than most humanoids on Earth. Then came the G1, the lab-friendly smaller version. Now the run-on, cheaper, lighter, still intelligent, still powerful. We're moving from industrial research to public deployment and then to personal ownership. That's the curve we're on. And Unitree just threw gasoline on that fire. And yes, it's easy to laugh at a little robot doing cartwheels and throwing fake punches. But this is how it always starts. First it's a party trick, then it's a prototype, then it's a product, and then it's part of your life. If you've been waiting for the moment humanoid robots go mainstream, this might be it. Of course, this is still the beginning. We're not saying the R1 is going to take over your job or run your household just yet, but the fact that this level of tech is now available for the price of a decent laptop, that's no small thing. And don't forget that robot cop in Shanghai, because that's the other half of the equation, real-world testing. While the R1 is getting into the hands of developers, cities like Shanghai are already experimenting with integrating humanoids into actual civic infrastructure. What happens when those two trends meet? When hobbyists, students, and labs start designing robots for tasks like traffic control, caregiving, or frontline service? What happens when the affordability of the R1 meets the ambition of public-facing robots? We're about to find out. Because whether it's Unitree's R1 dazzling YouTube viewers with cartwheels, or a humanoid standing tall on a Shanghai intersection, the line between lab demo and real-world deployment is getting thinner every day. And here's the wildest part. Unitree's not done. Not by a long shot. They've already teased future iterations. More joints, better perception, smarter behavior. And if the R1 is any indication, they're going to keep pushing prices down and capabilities up. So if you thought this was the end of the story, it's not. It's just the beginning.